Hey guys, how's it going? Um, so this is going to be a tutorial on how to animate. Um, so a lot of you guys have been asking for the tutorial that I mentioned previously. Um, and I also kind of want to show you guys how it's done so that, you know, if one day you want to create your own animations of your own Goku vs. Saitama or whatever, you can do it. Um, and also, if anybody gets good enough and they want to collaborate, that would also be really cool. So um, to start off, uh, I'm gonna. This is gonna be more of an intermediate tutorial. I'm not gonna go over the basics of Flash, or now it's called Animate, um, because uh, you can learn that anywhere. But I'm gonna go over like a little bit more intermediate um, techniques and kind of show you how these fast-paced scenes are done. So uh, this is my favorite scene in all of Dragon Ball Z from when Goku fights Cell and I turn it into the, this is from part three of Goku vs. Saitama. Let me just show you what it looks like in full speed. So let's break this down. Let's see exactly what happens. So on the first frame, uh, it starts out with this little starburst graphic here. Um, and that's just to show Goku's like coming from a distance. So I drew this uh, symbol. Um, after that, uh, you see a little black blob. Next frame, Goku kind of starts coming into play a little bit more. These are all 1 24th of a second, by the way. So 24 of these little images is in one second. So I know it looks like shit, but it's moving. It's going to move so fast that you can't even really tell. Um, which is a, a trick the animators use because if you try and fully detail draw everything in these like your, your eye can't even pick it up 1 24th of a second so even a blob still looks good um, so as you can see now he starts spinning coming into play more so some of these I didn't redraw every time I just kind of resized it and uh, changed the rotation now he's coming into play a little bit more and again it all still looks like crap until he gets close to the screen then the detail starts expanding um, these are all 124th, 124th. Now he's, you can start seeing some face. So, see, I drew all that. I mean, I know it looks like crap, but you saw what it looks like in, in full speed. I mean, you can't. So you can't even see it, but it looks cool. So now he's starting to come into more detail, more detail. And, you know, these, these took about 15 minutes to draw in color. So th think about the time that you're spending um uh you know 15 minutes just for 1 24th of a second is still like a really long time um and you know but that's that's what it takes in order to, an to have an animation look really good and awesome you have to draw you know even if it's you do it, you extend each of these for an extra frame um it'll slow it down quite a bit but uh, it'll still look pretty good but if you want something to look super smooth and fast and awesome it has to be 1 24th of a second so now he's coming in and side of my boom right in the face and then I have uh, some camera shake here I have uh, this special effect which is just kind of like a um, impact uh, effect and then some spit coming out um, again let's look at that one more time full so it looks awesome right so this this whole scene probably took me you know, maybe an hour to pro probably about two hours. Um, and uh, yeah, and so that's that's basically how it breaks down. Two hours for a 1.6 second scene. Um, and this part I had already drawn from a, a, a scene before. So I just uh, cut it out and resized it. Um, so I was able to use that. But but drawing all these little, little things is, is super time consuming. Um, so, uh, this is Black Goku, um, starting to work on part five, and black, or maybe just a Black Goku, uh, um, you know, side story animation of what I think he should look like, uh, kind of like a fan animation of Black Goku. Um, I don't know, I think this looks, this looks pretty awesome. Little teaser of Black Goku, um. But anyway, so let's uh, let me start a new scene and uh, show you guys how to draw. So there is two different ways you can draw in Flash. So you can either use your brush tool, which I just press B, and then I can start drawing Goku. You know, I mean, I'm just gonna draw. Really. So you can draw like this and. Um, you know, but the, the problem with the brush tool is that um, 
is that it like it the lines just don't look like smooth. I mean, granted, I'm doing this really fast and it's not supposed to look like really amazing or anything. Um, but uh, the lines just like don't look smooth, but it is a uh, much faster than vector art. Um, so uh, vector art, uh, let me just erase this. Vector art use the line tool. And then basically um, I can create like the shape of his face much easier this way and cleaner. And then what you can also do is like, say it's like a muscle, like a bicep or something, you just click it and like you can move it, you know? So it gives it that like smooth line look. Um, oh shit, I gotta zoom in here. So I wanna do his eyebrows. So again, these are just examples. Don't judge my animating ability um, based on what you're seeing here today. Um, oh God, this looks so fucking bad. <laughs> All right, and then you can use shapes like for eyes if you want. Uh, oh shit, that's, let's give him blue eyes. Wow, this looks like shit. That is, holy fuck. That looks so fucking horrible. All right. Um, <laughs> so detail is important. Um, what do I want to try and draw? So you know what? Let me let me take a bitmap. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pull an image off Google and show you. I mean, how you can how you can trace stuff. Take an image of Goku. So and this one looks cool. So I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna paste it. That's gigantic. Alright. So here I have a pretty cool image of Goku. Now there's one uh actually kind of absurd trick that I just learned about. Um and I don't really recommend using this because it's kind of like cheating. But if you want, you can. You can use the, I don't know if the old versions of Flash can do this. But with the new versions of Flash, you can just do um, modify bitmap trace bitmap and then hit OK. And there you go. It literally traced it in the program. And now I can like change the color. So like if I want this to be black Goku, I can like change his gi to black. Um, I can change his eyes to red. Uh, that's not going to work, but I don't know. I, d I don't recommend doing this. I recommend just drawing it from scratch. It'll just look more authentic than if you just do a trace. It's going to look like, I don't know, it's just going to look like really bad. So let's take that all away. All right. So if I want to do a trace, I want to go up here. I want to start a new layer. And then usually lock the layer that this was on um, <clears throat> so that I don't uh, start uh, pulling it and messing with it. And I'm going to make my line stroke two and then, oh, that's too big. Let's do 1.3. And I'm literally just going to like start going over it. And just using my vector art tool because it's going to make your images look like way cleaner than if you use the brush. So in episode one, I used the brush tool and that's why it looks like really sloppy. Um, and then I started using the vector art in episode two um, and beyond, which is why it looks so much better. It's a little bit more time consuming, but it makes coloring way easier. Um, it makes reusing images way easier. Um, it's just all around better to draw in vector if you can. The only way I would say don't draw vector art is if, um, if, is if uh, it's like a really fast paced scene. Uh, where they're not going to be able to really see the detail difference that much, like that spin kick that I showed you earlier. So um, this is, I mean, this is basically how it goes. So, you know, for your still shots especially, you want it to look like as clean as possible. Um, so I'll go over this like kind of quick, but, and then I'll show you how coloring works. All right, we'll just do that for now. So now I have an enclosed image. So another cool thing about Adobe Animate, and I'm not sure if you can do this in older versions of Flash, but if I use my pen dropper tool um, or my eyedropper tool, I can literally click the color um, and it'll it'll pick up that color in my palette. So I want this like shaded color right here. And I literally just draw over it 
and then I press K for the, f the fill and I can just fill it in. So this makes things like really easy. Um, this is one of the ways that um, I'm able to produce these so fast um, is that uh, Adobe Animate gives you a lot of tools that, that help speed up your time. Now there's different programs. You don't have to animate in Flash. In fact, Flash is probably one of the worst animation tools, um, but it's the one I know and it's the one I'm comfortable with and I have all my assets in Flash now. So I don't really want to start learning another one having to rebuild all my assets. Um, assets being like images and like symbols and stuff that I've already drawn on my special effects. Um, you know, you build those and over time you can use them again and you have them always for the future. So, um, you know, you don't, so that it makes, it makes future animations get easier and easier and faster as the more you do them. Cause as you create special effects, you always have those for the future. So here I created the arm. So yeah, it doesn't look like the trace, but it looks more like cartoony. Like I actually did it myself. Um, and then, uh, you guys are going to have to learn how to use symbols. So symbols are really amazing. Um, I do just about everything in symbols. So you highlight it, you right click convert to symbol, and then um, it becomes a whole image itself. And you can do so many things with the symbol. Um, whoops. So if I want uh, to make his arm, so I'm going to like make his arm move uh, out like i don't know he's getting right like this right so if i have as a symbol now normally if i wanted to animate this i'd have to do like one keyframe one keyframe one keyframe one keyframe one and you know that that takes forever but what you can do as a symbol as like as i uh put it how i want it in the end and then i do create classic tween and now when i test play it oh shit i fucked that up hold on i know why because if you move if you move this thingy now it should be fine. So see now, like if it's gonna be a block or a punch or something, you know, you can you can make you can make stuff move. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Let let me try and find some more examples. Um, well, this is an example of a symbol. So here's another picture of Black Goku I have. Um, so I have a special effect aura in the background and then his hair. So let's take a look at his hair real quick. So this is, um, eight keyframes long. And basically what I did is I just redrew it, redrew it, redrew it, redrew it. And then it goes back. So then when you look at it at full speed, um, it looks like it's like waving and it's kind of choppy here because of this thing. I'll just delete this real quick. And I'll put it back, but, uh, there now it looks smoother. Um, so that's something cool that a symbol will do. Um, you don't have to just keep copying and pasting your thing along the whole timeline. Um, it'll just keep replaying the symbol as long as you have it extended here in your timeline. So that's really helpful for things like hair moving, clothes moving, um, stuff like that. So let me put my aura back there. So this aura is basically just a white blob. Okay. Oh, you know what? I need to show you something else. Okay, so say, say I want to give this Goku um, an aura. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw it in a solid color, and then I'm just going to change it later, um, just because it's going to be white. But I'll just do some some easy, simple. God, this looks like you know what? Why did I do that? I'm just going to copy this, paste it, flip it around. All right, and then oh shit! You know what, guys? I'm drawing this. Ah, fuck. Ah, uh, so I got a gap in here somewhere. Oh, it's because of that. There we go. So I'm going to convert this to a symbol. And then inside the symbol, I'm going to give it a second key from going to turn on my onion skin so I can see how it looked. Now I'm going to kind of redraw it. Um, but like a little different. So it's going to look like the aura is flickering. And when this is done, it'll look really cool. So let's kind of do the same thing we did with the last one. 
just duplicate it. And then you're not going to see the top here, so I'm just going to close it off. All right. Now, the reason why I made them um, red is um, so I could see it. I'm actually going to make them white. But now I have this symbol, so what I can do is I can give it glows. So, so once something's a symbol, you can give it glow or blur, drop shadow. I use um, blur, I use glow the most, and then I use blur quite a bit. Um, so this glow, so we're gonna want it to be blue, like a really strong blue, like he's getting ready to go Super Saiyan God. So that's inner, uh, that's outer glow. This is an inner glow. So this already will look kind of cool um, if I just play it. Oh, what the hell? Oh, it's because this guy's, so this layer's below. Okay, so now, so already it's starting to look like a little bit cooler. Um, but uh, what I can do is I can slow that down. That might help. Um, I can also turn these into symbols. So you can have symbols inside of symbols and give these a different color glow. So I'll give these like a dark blue. Just turn up this, and then I want it. To, I'm gonna want it to flicker colors, so I'll give this like a different shade of blue, like even darker. All right, so let's see what this looks like now. So I got. Let me just erase this arm because it's kind of annoying. So that looks interesting. I actually don't like how I slowed it down. So, you know, sometimes uh, you just got to toy with these things. Honestly, like if, if you want an aura to look really cool or a hair movement to look really cool, you got to do it in three frames. Like three will make something look good. Four looks makes it look amazing. Um, like, for example, uh, this Geno scene is where he's running. Uh, is actually... That looks really cool, right? But that's actually, if you break it down, that's actually four um, images. So I'll show you how it is. One, two, three, four. And then it's a symbol, so it just keep keeps replaying it. So if you want something to look really awesome, do it in four symbols. Three is kind of the go-to for making symbols look good, like a hair movement or a any kind of continuous movement. Um, and then, you know, two is, uh, usually two is just not enough. Um, but there's actually is some circumstances that you want to do two. So the aura now looks like, I mean, it's getting, it's getting a little bit better. Um, anyway, that's how you do an aura. Hair is, is pretty similar. Um, I probably shouldn't give away too much of my black Goku shit, but uh, let me see. Um, here's another example of a symbol being used. This little black, uh, these little black things. This is, uh, something I'll just learn in animation. <coughs> to, to kind of emphasize a scene, like, surprise. And basically what it is, I just drew the lines and I made a symbol. And then I gave it two empty spaces after. So it only shows up, um, eight times a second instead of 24 times a second, which would basically be, it wouldn't be blinking at all. But now it blinks. Once every uh, three twenty fourths of a second, um, and it gives it that look. Uh, oh shit! I'm showing you guys too much. <laughs> All right, let me get out of this. Um, let me see here. What else I want to show you? Some cool scenes. Oh, so stuff like this. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm just going to delete the sound right now because it's hard. Um, for you to hear. So so if you see his hair flying like that, I think I redrew his hair like seven times there. Yeah. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But that's I mean that's what it that's what it takes to make stuff look cool. I mean you just gotta redraw it and redraw it and redraw it. Um, this uh, symbol right here, if you look again you'll see this kind of floating up um, as the the scene is going on. I'll show you how to do that. It's really easy. So you can barely see it, but it's a cool looking effect. So basically what I did is I just I just drew this in white and then I turned it to a symbol um, and then I gave the symbol a glow and then I just made it a tween. So I put it, the tween is five uh, frames long. 
and I basically just put it at the bottom on the top, on, and then after five frames, I put it at the top and then I did right clicked and just did create classic tween. And now it just continually goes up and down and up and down. Um, the lightning is a lot more complicated. Uh, I probably have to give like a whole tutorial just on how to do the lightning. Um, it's way more complicated, but uh, look um, <clears throat> let me see what else can I show you guys Let's just go through part three here um, this thing is a where they're fighting here so that is a crazy long symbol um, I'll show you guys what this thing looks like broken down so there we go so this is 45 frames long but uh, a lot of this was was reused um so but there's this one took me like i don't know five hours or something to do um so that's one frame it lasts or that's the first shot i guess it's two frames long this is two frames long um this is one frame long two frames two frames one 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 two and so basically it looks like this really fast paced action with the naked eye it just looks like they're battling in like super speed but so basically what you want to do is if you want like have a really like one of these like fist fight action scenes um you just create a symbol and you redraw it redraw it redraw it in different uh stances um and then in the end it's gonna look like this <laughs> So it looks pretty neat. Um, all right, I don't know how much more I'm going to show for this tutorial. Let's, let's just give me some feedback, uh, what you guys want to see, um, and if you want to learn anything else. Um, oh, let me just do like one one more real quick thing. Um, so if I wanted, to, I'm just going to delete this aura. So if I want to give Goku like a um, <clears throat> a Kamiyamiha ball, uh, I'm just going to basically create draw a circle uh, and then I'm gonna convert this to a symbol it's so easy and then I give it a glow and I'm just gonna give it like a like a light blue glow make it like really strong and there he's he's got some Genki Dama joint he's powering up right here right so I mean it's really easy to create like energy balls in flash that's pretty easy lightning is a little bit of a different story but stuff like this is is easy so anyways that's it that's just gonna be my first tutorial if you guys like this video and you want to see more um, let me know um, and maybe I'll just take actually take my time and draw a picture from scratch so that you guys don't think all I do is copy because it's not true there's millions of other elements involved in just tracing some stuff um, which, by the way, let me just get into rotoscoping real quick. So a lot of people give me crap because they're like, oh, all you do is trace and meh, 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 meh. Um, you guys have no freaking idea like what goes into this stuff. And any good artist rotoscopes and traces. One, it's how you learn. Two, it's how you make things look authentic. And three, you're not the original artist. So if you're going to try and do a fan animation like Dragon Ball Z or One Punch Man, you can't recreate it better than the original artist. The only way that you can make it look good is if you do it is, is if you mimic the way that they do it. Um, so you know, if if you have you know, the thing is like people give me crap about it, but they don't realize that like you watch any other fan animation I, that's good. I guarantee you, I can spot like at least like five to ten places where they rotoscope scenes, and I can even show you where in Dragon Ball Z they rotoscoped from. So you stop giving me shit for it. Right? I'm just trying to like make fan made content to make people happy and enjoy it. Um, and you know what? Like, why do you even care, dude? Like, just go create your own. See how hard it is if you don't believe me. Um, and and besides, I have learned so much. Damn it! I'm showing. Stop showing you too much Black Goku. Okay, I'm gonna fuck. God dang it. Um. <laughs> uh. So um. Yeah. What I'm saying is I have learned so much um, from look, like breaking down frame by frame. So basically what this is rotoscoping is you, you download a, an episode of Dragon Ball Z or any anime and you basically break it down frame by frame, which I can do here uh, in Premiere. I can, I can actually show you how to do it. So 
Um, let me just uh, open a Dragon Ball Z episode real quick. All right. So let me put this one in. So. <laughs> So, this is how you do it. So you can literally see frame by frame everything that they're doing. And that's, that's really what I'm doing. I'm just pressing this button. It goes up one frame. So, by the way, the DBZ does not use tweens unless it's for, like, camera movement. Otherwise, they always do frame resizing and frame redrawing. So you see here, like, but the, like, this is crazy. Like, let me explain something. So they fully drew cell here with all these little spots, shadows, all this stuff. I mean, that probably took a long time for, for one twenty-fourth of a second. I go for one more frame, redrawn all of it. One more frame, redrawn all of it. One more frame, redrawn all of it. I mean, that's fucking crazy. I mean, the amount of work that goes into that to make this scene look awesome. Uh, is unreal. I mean, I mean, that's one of the reasons that Dragon Ball Z fights look so good. Like, you have no idea what goes into um, animation until, like, you actually break down an anime and see it frame by frame. I mean, One Punch Man is even is even crazier than this. Um, it's, it's, like, absolutely freaking insane, like, how One Punch Man, like, the, the way they use effects to make Saitama's hits look hard is just mind-blowing. Like, how does he know to make this, like, okay, let me, let me show you. Um, da -da 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 -da. Hold on, give me a sec, guys. So... Okay. Like this scene is insane. So let me break this scene down for you. I mean, you guys don't realize. Okay, so they are literally redrawing 124th every second for like three minutes straight. I mean, so that's why it took them 12 months to do 12 episodes of One Punch Man. So see, frame. Frame, redrawing, redraw, not the redraw. So they're actually going 12 frames a second here. Because if I click this once and it doesn't move, that means it's two frames. Um, it means it's 12 frames a second instead of 24. They're basically extending the frame one second, but or one 24th of a second. But they don't always do that. Um, so yeah, right here, 12 frames a second. But you can see, like, like how do you know, like, to make the camera angle move, to resize these body parts? depending on the camera angle to add this like these little bits of scratch scratch drawing to to show speed um you know like all this stuff like what is it drawn in like crayon or something? i mean i don't know they they just these they're just literally amazing but this stuff happens so fast it happens so fast you don't even see it um but it makes the it lo makes it look freaking awesome so <laughs> Let's let's break that down real quick. That special that effect, that explosion. Okay, so so one, it goes. So so how do you know to add all this light blur? Like so you don't see this with the naked eye. But I hit it again. Boom! It goes zoom out. Now we have some uh, dust coming out. It probably expands, blurs, expands. The camera shake. This stuff's going. On. <laughs> I mean, they're like redrawing all this. It's just crazy. So anyways, that's what rotoscoping is. And, you know, if you want like a really intense action scene, um, I recommend uh, doing it a little bit so you can kind of learn what goes into um, creating a fast-paced animation with like all these, these um, um, you know, battle scenes and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah. Anyways, don't... Um, Anyways, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and uh, and I'm, I may do more of these. I don't know. <sighs> Depends how you guys respond to it. But uh, if you enjoyed this and you want to see more, please hit like and subscribe, and uh, have a good day, guys. Thanks.